Check out this animation. That grid pattern you're seeing is created procedurally in Blender through a process called masking. Now, what is masking? Masking at its basic form is used like a stencil where you're using shapes and patterns to hide and reveal things. It's used quite a lot in video editing where they're using it for transitions or really cool visual effects. I use masking all the time in my motion graphics that I make every day by making and combining patterns together in the shader editor to create really cool, really unique patterns. So in this video today, I'm gonna to show you how this process is done here in Blender and how you can use it to make a really cool motion loop. All right, we are here in Blender 4.0 and what I'm gonna do is just gonna go over here and just bring over a new window. And then we'll go up here and turn that into the shader editor. And I'll hit N to remove that thing. So first, let's go ahead and get our mesh. Let's get a plane. I'm gonna hit S5 just to give it a little bit more scale. And then I'm gonna hit Control A, apply that scale, and here we go. So let's get a top view on this guy and let's, and make sure right over here, you are in the EV render engine. And then I'm gonna go here just to the render view. So let's click new and we have our principal BSDF. Let's delete it and let's create our first mask. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna hit shift A and search and get in a, a mix shader. And so we're gonna, this guy allows us to do masking. So what we'll do is plug it into the surface and we'll get the two surfaces that we're gonna use a mask to make sense of everything. So first we need to get an emission node and we'll plug him here on the top socket and you'll see him, now you can see it, and we're gonna get a transparent BSDF to make sure you don't get translucent. I make that mistake all the time. Now, quick side note, in order for transparency to work in Eevee, you have to click over here to the shader menu and then um, go from blend mode to alpha blend. So this is the best way to describe masking. Right now, it is, right now the mix shader is evenly mixing the two surfaces, the emission and the transparent. So how do we make them look like something? So we'll use a mask to tell where the emission to go and where the transparency to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and search up a Voronoi texture and we'll plug the distance into the mix shader. And there we go, now we have a little bit of masking happening. Very simple masking, it's not really doing something very interesting yet. What I'll do is with that Node Wrangler add-on, I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control T, and we'll use the object coordinate to get everything to look nice. And then we're gonna go ahead and get a color ramp to really make this look like something usable. So what I'll do is I'm gonna bring my randomness down to zero so we get nice grid lines, and then we give myself a scale of one. So if you just bring in this color ramp, you'll actually see, okay, that transparency is working. We've now created a circular mask. This mask, of course, telling the mix shader where to place the emission and where to place the transparency. So that is masking here in the shader editor at its very basic level. But now let's create masks within the mask to create really interesting custom patterns that you don't get by default here in Blender. Now you can see how the circle's really soft. I want it to be a solid edge. So we're just gonna go here to a constant offset. So now it's a solid edge. And I don't want circles. I'm actually gonna go from Euclidean to Chebyshev. And now we're gonna go ahead and we get, we have squares. And I'm gonna go and flip the color ramp so that we get this nice wireframe look here. So this is the first pattern. But now what I wanna do is create a mask that only reveals the middle here. So it looks like a plus icon, right? So that means we have to have a mask that's gonna hide the middle parts of these lines and just reveal the, the, uh, the other middle so that it just shows a plus symbol. Now, how is that possible? What we'll do is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight these two guys. I'm gonna hit Control Shift D. Of course, make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. Comes with Blender by default. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit Control Shift click here and you don't have to do this part. I just want to isolate this to show you what's gonna happen. This Voronoi texture Right now we're just looking at the raw Voronoi texture, no emission, nothing. What, but what we see is this square shape here. And we're gonna use that square shape as a mask. But we are gonna run into problem because we want these squares to actually be over the plus section. Right now they would just right be in the middle. What we'll do is we'll hit Shift A and get in a vector math node and just a really simple thing. I'm gonna click and drag right here and hit 0.5 and that will shift them up and to the right a little bit so it's gonna hover over the plus section area. So I'm gonna go over here and hit control shift click. So we're just revealing now the emission that we're seeing. So how do we allow ourselves to create more masks within, you know, this mask, this preliminary mask we already made. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to get in a mix color node. 
and plop it here. Now I do want to make an important uh, point here. See how we're seeing black and white? Like when I control shift click, we're seeing black and white. So when we are making masks within Blender, black and white are going to be the things that should say black represents this, white represents this. So in this case, if I right click here, black represents emission and white represents transparent. So that's something that you can think about when trying to figure out how everything works here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just move these guys over by hitting G plop this guy here, and we're gonna take this factor here, so if we bring it to the right, to the left, we're gonna plug the factor in, which is gonna create a new mask. So plug that right into factor, and now we can see, okay, we have our shape here. And you can bring this all the way down to black to like combine them now to create something like this. But I actually want to invert that behavior. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip my color ramp, and then bring this kind of over here, and then bring this color all the way up to white, which of course white is going to represent that transparency. And we now have created a mask of plus icons. So if I control shift click here, you can see, see this shape right here, this black, of course the black is gonna represent the uh, mask here. That mask is hovering over the plus icon. So we have this original shape right here. And then we have this shape here combined together with this mix, creating a mask that gives us our plus icons. Super cool. But let's take it a step further. I wanna be able to kind of hide, randomly hide some of these plus icons so I can animate them coming in and out, making it look really cool. And what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and get another mix color and plop it right there. So I'm gonna go and get another Voronoi texture, another color ramp, so I'll just highlight these. And I already know that I want them to be offset, so I'll keep them on the line with the vector, uh, the vector math here. So control, Control shift D, bring it up. And instead of using distance, which is gonna make things um, shrink and expand like we've seen, we're gonna use color and that's gonna do something else. So if I control shift click on this guy and I bring it around, see when I move the color ramp, it's gonna behave differently. And then I'm gonna go from 3D to 4D, which is gonna allow us to animate this. So again, we're seeing black and white. I want this to cover the plus icon. So when the black or white portions are covering the plus icons, it's gonna hide some and reveal some and then allowing us to animate that. So that is what we're doing here. So I'm just gonna go ahead, control shift click there. And we're gonna plug this right into the mix right there. And now you can see it working. We just have to go ahead and bring this guy all the way up to white. And now you can see that happening. So if I bring this up, you can kind of see how it works. Now, if we bring over the double, you can see it's hiding some and revealing some, and then we can just bring that color back up to a pure white so we don't have to see that visually. And then we can say, I wanna see more of them, just a few of them kind of animate in and out, and there we go. We now have this really interesting mask. And there we go, we've done, I guess, three masks here. The first mask is using a simple pattern to create those, like that wireframe looking thing, straight into this mix shader. And then the rest of the masking was doing with mix RGB. So the first mask created the plus icons, the second mask enabled our ability to hide and reveal other plus icons. And that is the main mask. Now let's go ahead and add a little bit more design to here and then we can move on to making this a really cool looking motion loop. So what I wanna do is actually take this original wireframe looking pattern, I'm gonna highlight it, I'm gonna hit Control Shift D, we're gonna, and we're gonna do one more mix color thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Shift A and get in a mix color, and I'll just bring them up here for ease. And then we will plug that right into here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just flip this color ramp so that we can see, all right, now we got that. So now we can see this. And you can see how, because it's a mid gray, they're clashing, the, the mask isn't completely uh, you know, committing. So we'll just go over here and bring this all the way to a pure white. But look at this, if you go to a pure black, it creates that. Pretty cool. So there's a lot of really interesting things you can do with masking. And here we go, this is the finished pattern with all the masks and all the really cool things that we can now use as an asset to create a really cool motion loop. Now this concept amongst a lot more is something that I did a huge deep dive on in a course that I just released. It's my intro to motion graphics course and it's seven hours of training, 14 lessons, and tons of really cool things like geometry nodes, procedural shading, tons of looping techniques, compositing, just a bunch of really cool things that's gonna get you really comfortable in Blender, but also even more comfortable making really cool motion graphics. Right now it's 25% off until January 15th, so if you wanna check that out, hit the link in my bio. It's a really cool course, I spent months on it and I'm super proud of it. 
feel free to check that out. Now we can go ahead and take this idea and turn it into a really cool motion graphics loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this over to the left and start to build this out. So I'm gonna use a really efficient looping technique. I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna hit R, X, nine, zero. And then we're gonna hit shift A and get in another plane. And I'm gonna hit S, five. And we're just gonna use him as a guide. So I'm just gonna double click and call him G, U, I, D, E, so we don't get confused. I'm gonna take this guy, click on the move tool. I'm gonna hold down control and bring it to the very edge. Be sure you hold down control and I'm gonna hit Alt D and get another one right there. We're gonna highlight this, hit M, put them into a new collection and I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it loop. So now what we can do is instance this down the line so that we can guarantee when the camera moves through it, this thing is gonna loop seamlessly. So I'm gonna hit shift A, collection instance loop. I'm gonna hold down control and make sure you're holding down control, which is why we created this guide right here so that we know when to stop this and that it's precise. And then I'm gonna hit Alt D and do it again. And then you can highlight these. And that's one of the values of making these patterns procedurally. I know you can make it in geometry nodes, you know you can do it some other ways, but because this is done procedurally, it is gonna be absolutely real time in EV. We're not dealing with really any geometry at all. And the procedural materials are very light um, on your computer, especially here in EV. So we'll just duplicate them a bunch, something like that, holding down control, of course, to snap them to the grid. I'm gonna hit the tilde key now and click on front and then get a camera and then I'm gonna hit the tilde key and go to the top. So what I wanna do is start the camera right here on this line. Again, another good reason why we have that guide is so we know exactly where to put the camera's anchor point. And so that we can put it, I wanna I want to bring it back four, four instances. So I'm gonna click on the camera, hold down control, and he is gonna snap exactly right there. And that's gonna guarantee, of course, that this animation is going to loop. The number one rule with looping, and this is something I touched on in the course, is for something to loop, the very beginning and the very end have to be exactly the same so that you never know when the clip restarts. That is sort of the golden rule of looping animations. And so what we'll do is we'll hover over here and go to frame zero so we don't have a duplicate frame. I'm gonna give myself 500 frames and let's go ahead and animate this camera. So I'm gonna click on the camera. We're gonna go here to the object uh, properties and we're gonna click on the, the Y location. It's sitting at the 35. Again, another way we can guarantee that this is going to loop. We scaled the plane by five. This is a number that fits in that family of five of 35. So I'm gonna click here. We're gonna to go to the end and I'm gonna go ahead and hold down control and bring them all, of course, making sure you're holding down control and go to right there, the negative five. So I know from experience, that's perfect. And we'll click on the keyframe there. So now we could see, okay, that camera's going backwards. And because he starts and stops at the very edge of these um, instances, we know the animation is gonna look the same at the very beginning and the very end. Last thing I wanna do is just rotate the camera a little bit. I want him to kind of rotate um, through these 500 frames. So that is gonna be on the Y axis. So go back to frame zero, I'm gonna click on the keyframe, Go here and I'm gonna type in 360. And that is gonna give you a perfect 360 degree loop. And you can see, okay, that camera is definitely rotating. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and look at a major problem that's gonna mess this up. So first, I'm gonna click on the camera and I'm gonna give myself 11 on the focal length. And then now we have this. So see how you can see all of these guys in the distance. It's, it looks really ugly and it's just not very good looking. So what I wanna do is click on the world settings, go to a black here on the world, and then in the volume, let's get a principled volume. And then you can just bring that density down until I could just barely see like the third one. To me, that's, that's gonna look perfect. And then what I can do is go to the uh, material preview. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete my guide because I don't need it anymore. And then I'm gonna click on this guy and hit tab to go to edit mode. And we're just gonna go ahead and here we go. We'll make him a lot bigger so we cannot see the edge of it in our camera. And there we go. Now we have a really awesome looking animation. The last thing we need to do is add some compositing effects to really bring this animation to life. Cause it still, I don't know, it still looks a little basic. So what I wanna do is go, we're gonna open up the shader editor just to fix a few things. So go back here to the shader editor. I'm gonna hit N to remove that. 
And one thing I wanna do here is just go ahead and click and drag on the mapping node and just make it a little bit bigger. We're gonna scale up those, um, that whole pattern just to give it a little bit of a fisheye look. And then let's, on the, tra on the emission, bring that brightness up, which is, gonna, which is gonna mean we need to click on the world settings and then bring that volume down as well. Bring that brightness up. So what we can do now is click on the camera settings and go here to the uh, color management. Bring that exposure down. This is gonna help us with our compositing next. So let's go here to the compositing. So let's go ahead and just render a frame. So we have that, we can see it in our compositor. Let's head over to compositing. We're gonna click use nodes. We're gonna hit shift A and get in a viewer node. Plug that there. Hold down shift and right click so that everything is gonna go into the animation. And we're gonna go ahead and get in a glare node. And we're gonna go from streaks to ghosts. And that's gonna give us a really, really cool looking effect. And we're also gonna get in a lens distortion node and we'll put that here and give our dispersion at point, probably 0.15. And that's gonna look really cool. Now we can go back to layout. Now we're gonna to go to layout. I'm gonna scroll over here and on the drop down, I'm gonna click on always so that we can view our compositing effects. And then I'm just gonna go ahead, give myself a nice blue color here and then bring up that, that emission. There we go. And then we can bring that exposure down a little bit. And now if I bring this over, we can see these really cool looking compositing effects. And that is the whole thing. Now, last thing we need to do, of course, is to animate those plus icons moving in and moving out like we did with the compositor. So I'm gonna bring my exposure down. So I'm gonna bring my exposure down a little bit, just a tad bit, so we don't have those compositing effects too crazy. And I'm gonna bring it back over. And here's a fun trick. See how, um, if we go here to the Vorno texture that says 4D, notice how the W behaves. It's very like, I don't know, jumpy and not very uh, satisfying. See how that acts? Now try to remember how that looks. If I go ahead and put a wave texture on it and make sure you put it on the right side so it doesn't change the pattern. If we put it here and play with the phase offset, it is a far more satisfying motion. So see the W? See how that acts? Now let's play with the phase offset. It's far smoother. So that's what, we'll, and it also makes looping very easy. So we'll go back here again, hit the back arrow to frame zero. I'm gonna hover over here, hit I. I'm gonna go to the very end and I'm gonna type in 20 asterisk pi. And then I'm gonna hit I again and that's gonna loop that um, phase offset to animate as well. So now we have this whole animation ready and done and finished and looking cool and feeling cool. Um, the project file is available on Patreon right now. So if you are a paid member on Patreon, you're gonna have access to that. But with that being said, I hope that you guys learned some stuff. Masking is so important to know, especially when creating really cool procedural patterns. Use them all the time. Be sure to check out the course if you wanna support my work and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.